audience, please rise and put your hands together for our esteemed guest, His Excellency, Mr. Venkaya Naidu. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anirudh Narendranath, and this is Riya Garg. We are thrilled to be the masters of ceremony for this momentous occasion when a dignitary of high stature and repute has come to our school. On behalf of the GIIS Smart Campus Singapore, I am thrilled to welcome our esteemed guest, His Excellency Mr. M. Venkaya Naidu, former Vice President of India. I also take this opportunity to welcome our chairman, Mr. Atul Tamurnikar, our principal, Ms. Melissa Maria, members of the school management, faculty, and friends. I am ecstatic to announce that the Global Schools Foundation has officially completed 20 years since its inception. <laughs> On that note, let's watch a short video. What does it take to make a leader of tomorrow? A leader is forged by fire. Shaped, reshaped, their metal tested. Resilience and strength carefully owned. Yet a leader must also be like water, filling the cracks in a world rich in diversity, attuned to its complexities, flowing, adapting, changing. For a leader of tomorrow sails along on the winds of change, their minds purified by the rarefied air of lofty thoughts and high ideals, the jet streams of innovation and invention, neither of which can be enabled without space, space that can both contain and expand, mold and liberate, a foundation. For a leader must stand on solid ground. Responsibility breeds sustainability. Wisdom is cultivated by respect for this earth. Building the foundations for tomorrow's leaders begins here. Global Schools Foundation, celebrating 20 years of premium education What a truly inspiring video. Now, we have yet another short video about this institution which we call home. Leading edge technology, science, and sports. Innovation, acceleration. Space exploration. Right here, right now, my future begins. It's hands-on but it's also academically way up here. So I'm learning the skills I need to explore the universe. And I'm expanding my skill base with these next generation purpose-built studios. They adapt to a changing world. It's the future and it's now. Right here, right now. Technology gives me the opportunity to dive deep into research and innovation. With world-class educators to guide the way, I am best prepared for higher education and the university of my choice. New advances, new insights, mean new opportunities. And with them come new creative ways of problem solving. 
It's the future and it's now. Right here, right now, at these smart sports facilities, while best in class coaches are developing my strengths, guiding me to overcome my weaknesses and bringing out the best that I can be. So I'm tech empowered for better results, bringing my dream into reality. The future, it's now. Words will fall short to describe His Excellency Mr. Naidu and his contribution to India, but I will humbly try. He is the first Vice President to be born in an independent India. He rose from a small village in Andhra Pradesh to one of the highest seats in office. He has served the country and its people through many different posts, including the Housing Ministry, the Urban Development Ministry, the Information and Broadcasting Ministry, and of course, as the Vice President from 2017 to 2022. Mr. Naidu has also been in the Union Cabinet of former Prime Minister Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee as well as current Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi. But most importantly, despite having held so many high offices, he is known to be humble, quick-witted with a love for alliterative haikus. His ability to balance diverse opinions with linguistic opulence was famous when he was chairing the Upper House of Parliament. I speak for everyone here when I say that I'm eager to hear him speak and share knowledge on leadership and brotherhood. So without further ado, I request His Excellency, Mr. Venkaya Naidu, to come out to stage and address the crowd. Sir, please. Namaskar. This is the Indian way of greeting because Namaskar is our samskar. That's our culture. I asked my teacher, what is the difference between Namaskar and uh, this morning? He said, the meaning is the same, but if you say good morning, then afterwards you have to say good afternoon. And then evening you have to say good evening. Then night you have to say good night. You don't know whether it's a good night or bad night. So <laughs> best thing is namaskar, 24 hours namaskar. Namaskar, that too from heart you are saying like this. That's why I practice it and I also propagate it for others to follow within our country, India. Sri Atulji, founder, Madam Lalita Maria, principal, the members of the management committee, staff members, and my dear young students. I am really very happy to be here this morning. When I was told about this school, and I received a request from the school management because they came to know that I am coming here and addressing a ter Singapore Telugu Community Cultural Conference yesterday. So they wanted me also to come and meet you and greet you and talk to you for a while. So I felt happy because my favorite pastime has been meeting, greeting, talking, walking, eating, spending time with the children to the extent possible. As Vice President of India, as Minister, as Party President Arya, I used to go around the country and always used to meet the people and enjoy. Meeting people is a big learning. I have learned so much and could become the second highest constitutional authority in India because of my 
continuous journey across the country. Otherwise, my background is, I come from an agricultural family. None in my family were educated at that time. None were in politics, no dynasty. But I came up on my own because of the hard work, of course, because of the ideology, because of the support of the party, because of my friend's support, I could reach up to this place. I feel really happy to see you all. See the infrastructure that is created for this school, really amazing. I have not seen any school with such a good infrastructure, excellent infrastructure that way. I have seen many structures. Structure is different from infrastructure. Every facility is available. And also, I am happy to know that children from across the globe, they are here. Though it's a global Indian international school, there are children from other countries. It's really international that way. My dear friends, Youngsters, education is not only for employment. Education is not only for degree. Education is for enlightenment. Education is for enhancement of your knowledge. Education is to become something excellent and extraordinary in your life. And uh, we should pursue education. And the people who are importing education, they should also treat this as a mission. Mission with the passion for the sake of the nation without asking for any commission or giving any remission or doing any omission. You must have the passion. <laughs> then you will be... Then you will be able to run the institution and really reach the meaningful purpose of the institution. Our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, Indian Prime Minister, he, he work, I worked with him, of course, for many years. And I have seen him as Prime Minister. He want to make India. He want to modify India. Modify means not modify. Modify. The very name, of course, Modi, M-O-D-I, means making of developed India, M-O-D-I. That is the purpose. So he's working day and night. One may differ with him politically, ideologically, but nobody can find fault with his honesty, integrity, and hard work. So I call upon the children that honesty, integrity, hard work is very important. Aim high, dream high, then you will achieve. This is what is said by Dr. Abdul Kalam also. He also comes from a very humble background. He could reach that, become one of the great scientists and also one of the loving president of India. So my dear youngsters, work hard. Try to learn as much as after learning. I always tell the children or students, Whoever want to go abroad or pursue higher studies, I say go, learn, earn, and return. Return back to your motherland, one thing. Return back to society. It is not simply the fees you are paying that is sustaining the system, but there is also people's taxes, money, which is also pumped into the system. So we have to give back to the society. And our philosophy, Indian philosophy, is share and care. Share and care is the core of Indian philosophy. Share and care for others. That is the culture. Culture, what is culture? Culture is a way of life. The best way of life is to follow our own culture. So someone asked me, one of the boys, and I was addressing like this, he asked me, sir, please explain what is the culture further. I said, culture is a way of life. I'm not able to understand, sir. Can you give a small example? Then I told him, if you eat your bread, 
it is prakriti natural if you snatch away bread from the other fellow and eat it is vikruti unnatural and if you share your bread with the other who do not have that is called as samskruti that is culture this is <laughs> indian culture so i call upon all of you to study to follow to understand the culture of different countries and take the best culture forward religion is way of worship culture is way of living culture is more important than religion one man one can pursue his own religion but when it comes to the way of living respecting elders respecting teachers respecting nature 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 really gives us so much you are all enjoying good nature here in singapore because the people have not meddled with the nature in many countries people are meddling with the nature the reason that's why the climate change has become real now sudden rains temperature running high rising high in america catching a fire so many the drought cyclone tsunamis all are effects of irritating the nature so that's why i call upon all the youngsters across the country and in my own country please respect love and live with the nature love and live with the nature nature culture together for your bright future nature culture together for your bright future please follow this and before i conclude of course i will take some questions and respond to you and to the other boys and girls who are participating in this program from across the globe to archery my advice is try to be physically fit do some exercise whatever exercise you want do some exercise that is very much important in life you have seen the covid experience also if you are physically fit and mentally alert then you will be bright physically fit and mentally alert for that running jogging walking cycling volleyball shuttle badminton whatever it is i am 74 now just now i entered 74 and i play badminton every day morning 45 minutes in my house <laughs> that that is the reason for my health i personally feel do yoga yoga has no religion it has no boundaries it is now universal thanks to modi's initiative united nations have approved it and recommended yoga yoga is not because of modi it is for your body you have to understand this he <laughs> yeah. thanks to him he has promoted yoga in a, of course baba ramdev ji patanjali great people they have been promoting because yoga gives you makes you physically fit and mentally alert and also relax spiritually that is my first advice physical fitness second advice is eat proper food you may be surprised sir we normally people eat proper food no some of the people are getting into junk food junk food cooked food is very much required some people are saying no no so there is no instant food available instant food means constant disease you have to understand this how can food be instant it has to be cooked properly our indian tradition our culture thousands of years of civilization our forefathers have experienced and given us thousands of varieties of food like that in other countries also of course so you must eat uh, home made cooked proper cooked food which will have proteins not simple carbohydrates alone that is very much required required these are my two advices to you for the physical fitness and mental alertness if you are physically not fit then you will become lazy once you are lazy you will become crazy so 
nurturing the young minds to become global leaders. That is the purpose of the school. Nurturing the young minds to become world leaders. We don't know who is going to become a leader tomorrow. Everybody, if you work, work hard, you can become something in life. So as I told you, quoted Abdul Kalam ji, aim high, dream high, work hard, be disciplined, dynamic, dedicated, and devotion, all in one. Then you will become powerful person. Powerful means I'm not saying of boxing or doing something or kicking the other. Powerful means power, you, you will have power in you, power. Then that, that will bring you brightness in your face, brightness in your face. That really attracts the people and makes you also happy. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, for that truly inspiring speech. We will now have a panel discussion with students from our campus here in Singapore, while our sister campuses in UAE, Tokyo, and India join us virtually. Over to the panelists. Thank you so much for Sir, making time so to talk to the student, student community. Sorry. Your advice on keeping fit is well received by us and all our dear friends. I speak for everyone when I say that it was extremely inspiring. I'm Roshni from the Singapore Smart Campus and my fellow panelists are Ritwik, Sapazit and Abhinand. We are honored and thrilled to have you here, sir, and we are hoping to learn a lot from this interaction. We also have questions from our peers from other GIS campuses, from India, Abu Dhabi, and Tokyo, besides Singapore. So, sir, my first question to you is, you have always emphasized on the importance of learning uh, some, uh, your mother tongue. And only a few minutes ago, you emphasized on how Namaskar was a better greeting. But I have a question in that regard. English today is a widely spoken language, especially in India, and often people only communicate in English with each other. So, sir, what are your thoughts on that dichotomy? Mother tongue, mother tongue do not mean my mother tongue. Everybody's mother tongue. The Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, Malayali, Marathi, Punjabi, Assami, Bhojpuri, or Chinese, Malays. Everybody has got some mother tongue which has come from other's womb. Your thoughts will be bright in the early days if you speak and think and read in mother tongue. That has been the experience worldwide. Number one. Number two, first mother tongue. Then brother tongue. Then afterwards, any other tongue. <laughs> The mother tongue is a language mother, from mother's womb. Brother tongue is the other languages in the country. There are other people sitting besides you, your colleagues. They speak other, other language, so other tongue, other, uh, brother tongue. Then any other tongue. English, yes, it's an international language, but don't be under misconception that everybody speaks English. It's a wrong notion. Japanese, Chinese, Russians, Germans, French, lot of people, so-called powerful nations. I meet leaders from those countries, the presidents, and I received them as vice president and meet them, met them during the dinner hosted by the president. Or when I went them all, there also, I found most of them are speaking in their mother tongue not in English. Sometime back, before of course becoming vice president, I asked the foreign external affairs minister, these great leaders are coming from across the globe. Are they not familiar with English? The foreign, former minister, Srimad Sushma Swaraj, she told me, no, no, they know English. Then I said, why? Even if they know English, some of them, of course, she said, they do not speak in English because they want to speak in their mother tongue in a foreign country. This is the truth. 
and even secondary, many of the countries, they have the research in their respective languages, higher education in respective languages. But they also made progress. America, UK, this part, of course, English is their language. So they try to promote. As I, I can tell you, I am not against English. Learn English also, that's useful. But at the same time, learn your mother tongue, develop your early thoughts, and afterwards, I, uh, that's why I say to make my children understand. My children means youngsters. All of you are my children only, our children. Mother tongue is like your eyesight. The other language, including English, is, is like spectacles. If you have eyesight, spectacles will work. If you don't have eyesight, even if you wear Reborn glass, Zuban se kuch aayega na. This has to be understood by one another. So, that is the... <laughs> and now I can tell you, youngsters, now you are in a technological age advancement, coming days, I'll be speaking here in uh, English or Telugu. The aerogram will go there and then we'll be speaking in Tamil or in Chinese. This is the, the latest technology. So don't worry that there will be simultaneous translation, but thoughts will be original if you think and if you read, if you study in your mother tongue. That's why I insist. Yes, sir, that's very insightful and we'll definitely emulate your advice. Thank you, sir. So, our next question is from our school in Balewadi, India. Miss Ayushi Sanadia of grade 12 CBSE sent in this question. You've always shown excellent leadership skills in life. As chair of the upper house of parliament, your wit and knowledge was a great mix to have meaningful discussions despite political differences. Our school aspires to make us greater leaders. As budding leaders, we would like to hear some of your tips on how to grow and polish our leadership skills. First of all, uh, some amount of uh, wit is required in life. So you need to always have some humor. Humor and grammar will bring glamour. <laughs> humor, humor, you know, what is humor? And then grammar, grammar is not the what, Indian side of uh, Vyakarana. Grammar is subject. If you have depth of the subject, then you will get glamour. Your personality will be added. I'm not talking of the personality, physical, height, weight, coat, suit, boot, or other things. Your own face will shine because people start appreciating your personality and your greatness. So some amount of humor is required. That's why I always, always uh, you know, in parliament, the people try to create tension. If you have tension, you cannot pay attention and have retention. It will be only pretension. <laughs> you will be pretending as if everything is normal. No, it's not normal. So I try to intervene in between, crack a joke, or tell something of, from the past experience, and then try to bring order in the house. Parliament, whichever parliament it is, assemblies, provincial, the local bodies, where you have people's representative, general public looks to them as the leaders. So they must always set standards by maintaining values, by maintaining standards, and then automatically others will follow. That is what is expected from the leadership. Why Modi is being respected worldwide? Why the, even the past presidents, Abraham Lincoln and Fabrika, is respected by the people, irrespective of uh, their ideologies? Why many? I'm not taking many of the names because of time. Because they have set some standards, some values, discipline. So that's why I tell the parliamentarians and everybody, discuss, debate, decide. Discuss, debate and decide. 3Ds, 3D formula. Don't follow the 4th D. 4th D is a disrupt. 
disruption, obstruction, destruction is not useful. It is only construction that is required in life. So be positive always. Positive is a good thing, except during this corona, of course, positive. <laughs> we should all have negative only. I'm told uh, cases are rising in even Singapore. Today, my embassy told me, sir, cases are rising. So one has to be careful and all. So, but life in the life, we must think positive, act positive. That is what is required. So I asked the parliamentarians and others and youngsters also, follow discipline, try to set some standards, and then follow the values that were given by you, by two, by ours, by forefathers to us. This is my advice. Thank you so much, sir. So, the next question is from Julian Rad, a Chilean national studying at a GIIS Tokyo campus. Over to you, Julian. Uh, thank you, and hello. My name is Julian, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, this is my question. The Indian government is yeah. pressing for a fast digital society. The advent of the 5G network has taken the country by storm. It is also very prevalent in other parts of the world. Will these faster connectivity bring about a revolution in society and help in the welfare of the common man? Or will these create more disparities among social sections, therefore widening the gap between the elite and the aspirational? Thank you. So would you like me to repeat the question? The Indian government is pushing for a fast digital society. The advent of the 5G network has taken the country by storm. It is also very prevalent in other parts of the world. Will these faster connectivity bring about a revolution in society and help in the welfare of the common man? Or will these create more disparities among social sections, widening the gap between the elite and the aspirational? Thank you. It's like educated and uneducated. Simple. Simply because it's going to create differences or gap. You cannot abandon education, na? So technology is a reality. And bringing advanced technologies to fast forward the development, fast forward development, this is what is required. Because of the communication now, worldwide citizens of the world, they are aware of what is happening in the other parts of the world. And they have aspirations, youngsters also. They know what is happening. Earlier, what your grandfather used to say, grandmother used to say, our teacher used to say, you used to think, oh, this is the world. But today, world is world open, thanks to technology, and you know what is happening. So people should be reached through technology. There is no other way. And uh, Mr. Modi always believes in reform, perform, and transform. Reform, perform, and transform. Reformation of the society, transformation of the society, for the betterment of the society. That's part of the next question, I'm aware of it. So that's what I'm saying is, we must bring reforms. And technology will be very useful, I can tell you. Otherwise, government announces many schemes. But the scheme should reach people, na? Delhi, then Hyderabad, then my native place, then my village, then to the house. How do you reach it? Very noble announcements are made by different governments in different countries, unless they reach. So that's why Modi called for a opening of bank accounts. And it was discussed in cabinet, I can share with you, my dear youngsters. Many of the cabinet colleagues said, sir, opening bank accounts, okay, good, we'll do it in five years. He said, no, it should be done quickly, not five years. I intervened and told him I was minister at the time. A thing which could not be done in 50 years. If they are going to do it in five years, you must be happy. He said, no, we must open up bank accounts within one year or two years. Nobody believed, including myself. But today, India has got 63 crore bank accounts. <laughs> Some uh, pessimistic people, skeptical people said, Are paisa nahi hai, bank account se matlab kya hai? If you don't have money, what is the fun of having bank account? Mm -hmm. But today, See what is happening. People have opened back account and they are 
transferring money through digital transfer and then government schemes. There is a DBT, direct benefit transfer. Money is put in your account from Delhi. It reaches the gully, the remote place. <laughs> Without anybody's intervention, otherwise there will be dilution, there will be deviation. You all know that. Otherwise, one has to go even in Singapore or China earlier, India, people have to go to office, stand in the queue, wait for your turn, and then go and meet the concern, meet and greet, shake hand, and do something in between hand. <laughs> you know, something in between hand, you understand. So uh, with this DBT, you press the button, you are getting your benefit account transferred to your bank account. That is the power of technology. So you cannot avoid, you cannot postpone also. You should be fast forward. And Modi is rescue. He want to bring all these reforms. And he want to see that people, India becomes strong, stable, prosperous. And he gave a slogan, Atma Nirbhara Bharat. Self-reliant India. Self-reliant India means all of you, unless all of us become self-reliant, we cannot. So that is the purpose. And uh, there is no way everybody has to really fall in line and then take the technology forward. Sir, I completely agree with you. India has been restructured due to the technological advancements and recently UPI has increased the yeah. number of transactions exponentially. Good. And India is uh, truly becoming one of the largest economies. So I completely agree with you. Thank you so much for such, a, such an enlightening answer, sir. The next question is from Smart Campus in Singapore. My name is Abtadweep. My question is, like you said earlier, one mantra that you stuck by during your time as Vice President of India was reform, perform, transform. Our school also follows the theme of RISE, which is an acronym for respect, integrity, and innovation skills and entrepreneurship with empathy. Can you give us some insight into your thought process behind coining your theme and how best can the school work towards bringing these ideas to life? Because simply sympathy will not suffice. Sympathy must be followed with empathy. This has to be understood by one and all. And secondly, reform. Changing the system, whatever system it is. Perform, simply reforming the system, of, you know, it was unless you perform. I went to library just now, your library, great. And I was inquiring with the librarian, head of the library department, whether students are utilizing this facility. He said, good number of students. All facilities are created unless students go and take advantage of the facility. You know, for now you will not be able to achieve it. Reform, perform, you have to do it. And you say, time sense is required, discipline is required, and you don't follow discipline yourself. Humans, individual, I'm talking of individual. So one has to perform. And it's not that everything will be done by the government. That's another weakness in the system. Some people have developed that. Everything is, sab kaam sarkar ko karna. Sab kaam sarkar karega, am bekar baite to chilega. Aisa nahi chilega. All works will be done by the government. We need not do anything. Aisa kaisa hoga. So one, we also have to perform our duty, our responsibility and transform, that brings the transformation. What is the purpose of transformation? The purpose of transformation is to bring happiness. The purpose of transformation here in the school is to bring enlightenment, to bring enlightenment among the children. That is the purpose of transformation. All these facilities are created in enlightenment. It's not, as I told you, it's not for degree. It is for enlightenment. I will tell you one small thing. Education will give you 
knowledge. But what is required is wisdom. There is a slight difference between knowledge and wisdom. In our Sanskrit, jnanamu, jnanamu, jnana. Vijnanam, knowledge, information. You can study. Teacher can tell you many things. You can learn those things. But you will be only learning what is taught to you. Wisdom means if you interact with the teacher more, ask questions, and also interact with the fellow students, interact with the rest of the society, interact with the driver who is bringing you to the school, interact with the cook in your house, interact with different people, move to rural areas, interact with farmer. Interact with the technicians. That will make you more wise and to make you to decide whether to do this is proper or improper. We call it as jnana jnana vichakshana jnana. Yukta ayukta vichakshana jnana. What is good, what is bad. That knowledge. Whereas education gives you, as I told you, definitely knowledge. Knowledge alone will not suffice. You need to acquire wisdom. We educate in information. But information with confirmation is more than an ammunition. You have to understand this. <laughs> Some information is given to you. You don't know whether it is true or not. You are carrying that information. So if that information is followed by confirmation, then it's more than an ammunition. So the wisdom makes the information confirmation also. That is the purpose. So we must always try to learn. I was giving my own example. I come from a village. I used to go to school walking three kilometers daily, three kilometers going, three kilometers coming. Walking. No road, no bus at that time. No electricity in my village. Six o'clock, everything off. I walked like that. Studied in a street school. We didn't have proper school. Forget about global school. <laughs> Thanks to Atulji, he has created such a huge infrastructure and brought so many things for it. And then, afterwards, school, then high school, then college, then university, then into politics, then into st state, then into legislature, then into national, then into parliament, then into party, all this. Through this process, I have learned so much. There are many people who are more educated than me in parliament. In my house, the house means not my residence. Parliament, we call it as house, upper house and lower house. There are many scholars. But I was, I was able to manage because I have that earthly wisdom, which I acquired through my journey. I traveled. I have traveled across the country. I have covered almost all the districts in the country. I have st stayed in many states including the northeastern states, Nagaland, Mizoram, Burma, which are all bordering China, bordering Myanmar, Bar sorry, uh, Mizoram is bordering Ma Ma Myanmar, Nagaland also. All these bordering states, their problems are different. Their experience is different. So you get knowledge by interacting people, by spending time with them. This is how I acquired that much wisdom. So I advise all of you, study, then whenever you find time, visit the society, know the people, try to understand their problems, and whenever you get an opportunity, go outside also, outside your native place. First, understand your country, then try to understand other countries also, as 
early as possible as you get an opportunity. It means it's not easy for everybody to go around. I was into politics, so I could went around the country, met people. And also you must be always hearing others. I used to hear the speeches of great leaders, Raja Gopalachari, Raja Ji, Kamaraz, different parties, Adar Bihari Vajpai, Advani, Minu Masani, N.G. Ranga. I used to hear the speeches of other leaders of different countries and try to understand what they are saying. Thereby, if you hear others, your knowledge will go. First reading, then interacting with the teacher, then moving with the society, then attending and hearing the speeches of others. That is also required. This is how one can grow in life. Thank you so much, sir, for this insightful answer. So our next question is from our Bangalore campus grade 11 student, Miss Akriti Bhandari, and she is studying commerce. Over to Akriti. Over to Akriti. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Pleasure talking to you. So, my question in your entire career, you have dealt with a lot of diversity of opinion, which may or may not align with your thoughts and ideas. Our school also teaches that the diversity is to accommodate differences of opinion from all voices around you. It can be difficult at times. How did you manage to take everyone's views into consideration in face of demands and needs and make balanced decisions? Thank you. Thank you, Akriti. See, the unity in diversity is very much required. There is diversity even here. And there will be divergent views also. You can't expect everybody to speak the same language, the same wavelength, same ideas. There will be different ideas. You must be able to have the tolerance, tolerance to bear with the other ideas. You must be open. You should not be closed mind. I am so-and-so party, so I don't hear others then it, you know what is happening. I don't want to name the countries where there is no democracy. You must have tolerance. When people shout in parliament, I tell them, please have tolerance. People have elected a particular government. They have given them mandate. If you agree with them, fine. No, sir, we don't agree. I said agree to disagree. Agree to disagree, number one. If you want to protest, Protest, talk out, or walk out. Otherwise, there will be breakout. <laughs> and democracy will be all out. If there is a frequent day breakout, then democracy will be all out. So talk out means whatever you want to say, say. I always coin such words, easy, easy to remember also, pass on to others. Talk out, walk out. There's a way in democracy, if you don't agree with the house, go out of the house. Talk out, walk out, don't break out. You'd create noise, you get onto the bench, you break the mic. Some people break their shirts also. <laughs> without knowing what they're doing. Some people try to break their hair. <laughs> people do not have the hair, they try to Pick up the other hair, other's <laughs> hair. So, in a democracy, in an orderly manner, speak against the government. Uh, if you don't agree with the government, let the minister respond. If you are not satisfied with the minister, you can protest. Protest is talking out and walking out. That is the way of protest. In parliament also, some people become angry. Suddenly, some people become real angry. Some people try to be angry. You understand the difference. They pretend as if they are very angry. And say, no, sir, I'm not satisfied. I said, you are not satisfied. Bring the, they bring the bill. This is a, this is a bill, is against the will of the people. 
said, okay, let the government propose, let the opposition oppose, let the house dispose. House dispose, understand this meaning. There is a deeper meaning in this. Government proposes, they bring a bill, this reform. This is the measure we want to bring in. Opposition people, naturally they will oppose also. No, we don't agree with that. Let the house dispose. Then you insist on voting. House means the parliament decides by voting. Dispose. Propose, oppose and dispose. Otherwise there is no way. You can't physically snatch away paper. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> but uh, purpose is not served. So I call these members, some of the members who are agitated or who are indulging in this, non-parliamentary tactics to my room, my chamber. I sit there on the chair for some time. After some time, I put my deputy and I go to the chamber. Chamber is my sitting room. So then I call these members, some of them, and ask them, what is it? Mm, sir, sometimes they are apologetic. <laughs> ah, of course, I, we know, sir, but otherwise we will not get uh, coverage. Media also problem nowadays. Media do not give coverage to constructive debate. You speak very well. There is no mention in the newspapers next day. But you break the mic. You go to the well. Well means b between the members and the chair, there is open space. It's called a well. The great Rajagopal Chari said, if you are not well on the facts, go to the well of the house. <laughs> you will get into news. I asked the media people, what is this happening here? That boy, that person, that M MP spoke very well. He came prepared. He gave facts and figures. He said, okay, sir. This man did not do any of these things except breaking the mic. You gave him box item, important news. Then the response from the media is, uh, if a dog bites a man, normal. If a man bites a dog, it becomes serious. <laughs> That's what he told to me. I said, no, Babu, that is wrong. You must always highlight good points made. And so and so elaborately spoke. He gave constructive suggestions. These are the suggestions. These are the differences he had with the government. That is the way of reporting. But worldwide, not only in India, the trend is going for negative reporting. Negative reporting. What is happening in India, what is reported in some of the Western press, there's a vast difference. I see and I get surprised. I saw what you are. But this is a trend. We have to correct that trend. We have to correct that trend in the coming days. First, we have to improve. And I always try to talk to them. And when I insist them and I confront them in my room, they say, Sir, what do we do? It's up to the top. You understand what it is, up to the top. They say, Sir, what can we do, Sir? This is the instruction of the party leadership. So political parties also must think of evolving a code of conduct, self-code of conduct for their members, for the success and strengthening of democracy. This is how I tell them, and I try to call, and I, I, he is agitated, I allow him to speak. Come on, yes, speak. Speak, come on, what do you want, tell me. What is it? And then the people try to go on giving a long lecture. I said, no, make your point. Make your point. No, sir, this is my information. Then I say, your information has no confirmation, sit down. <laughs> they say, no, sir, it is a headline in the newspaper. The headline of the newspaper cannot be a deadline to us. We should follow our own line. Come on, sit down. Like that, I try to manage the house and also try to take up others. And sometimes when somebody makes a good point, even from the opposition, I tell the minister, he's making a good point, why don't you take care of it? Take notes and then try to address that problem or call that member separately, minister to your chamber, discuss issues, try to thought out like that, try to bring broad, con I don't say I've been successful fully, but to the extent possible, I used to manage it because of this little understanding of the parliamentary system. Thank you so much, sir.
The next question is from our Abu Dhabi campus. Science student of grade 12, Suraj Daima, has a question to you. Over to you, Suraj. Suresh. Ah, Mr. Suresh. Sir, you said in your speech to return to your motherland. Okay. And we are expat students are who have grown up outside of India. So what message would you like to give to the diaspora, especially students who are studying abroad all of their life and are more likely, likely to have a career outside of India? Thank you. First, respect the rules of the country wherever you are studying. Second, follow your culture, your heritage at home where you reside. Respect their rules and regulations. If you are a Singapore, you are Indian, you are a Chinese, or you are from Thai, you have to follow the rules laid down by Singapore government because that country is hosting. But at the same time, at home, you have your own cultural traditions, wearing the dress, conducting yourself, this is. And then try to understand as much as you can when you go abroad. And diaspora, one of the responsibilities of diaspora is that you are an ambassador of your respective country. So you must create goodwill for your country, highlight what is happening in your country. And as a student, because you said you are a student, the best thing is conveying messages, be disciplined, be honest, work hard, try to get knowledge. The others will think, oh, this boy uh, is from India, though he is in Abu Dhabi. So India must be great because this boy, his conduction is good. This is how one can really influence the others. But basic thing is follow the rules. And then follow your customs and culture. This is what is required. You are in Abu Dhabi, so no problem. We have so many things common and we are nearby also. So try to acquire more knowledge and utilize the time in acquiring knowledge because your parents have sent you with great expectations and then making some sacrifice for themselves, they are sending you to these institutions. So you must keep that in mind and work hard and acquire more and more knowledge. Thank you, sir. See, just now the system, na, there is a problem. So people sometimes nowadays, they say, sir, what is the, guru, guru, kya jarurat, sir? And there is Google, everything is available on Google. Even if there is some repair of the Google, you need to call the guru. You have seen just now, the system, the IT, the technology, so much progress has been made. But suddenly if there is some breakdown, someone, technician, technician is the guru, <laughs> or the teacher has to. So I always say, Google cannot replace guru. Google is useful. <laughs> Google is definitely useful. But Guru is supreme. So simply, we, I was just coming here. My assistant was sitting in the front seat and then he was trying to guide the driver. I told him that he's a local man, he knows. You simply say, where do we have to go? He said, no, sir. They will follow only Google route. And then I, I, I watched him, a driver also following Google route. This one or that one. Now take a right, take a, this thing and all. Then go. If you know Singapore, in and out, you can reach the destination. Of course, in between suddenly some roads one-way traffic, some diversions are made. So you must be aware of the latest diversion for that, again, technology. When it is likely to rain also, all those things will come because 
you cannot go there and find out whether it's raining that area. Yes. Nowadays, pickles are raining. Mm -hmm. Rain here, no rain in my hotel, near my hotel. It is, nature also is like way, that way it cannot be predicted. But you must be abreast with the latest information. But try to really have first-hand information and realistic information so that it will be useful for you in your life. Thank you so much. So my next question to you is on a lighter note, and it's about a game that you love to play, which is badminton. So you love to talk about the sport. And in fact, uh, one of India's most prolific players, PV Sindhu, hails from Telangana, which is part of, which was once part of your home state, Andhra Pradesh. And so this MPH where we're sitting right now, it often turns into an indoor badminton playground. Our school has three such indoor playgrounds. So it's a clear indication that sports play a huge role in a student's growth. So what are your thoughts on that? And how do you think India can ensure that more champions emerge from the country? I'm born in Andhra, but I stay in Telangana. I'm a Hyderabadi that way, of course. I spent time in Delhi, and then Hyderabad. My daughter is there in Chennai, so I spend. Nowadays, I'm spending some time in Bangalore. My granddaughter is there. I move, go on. When I used to play badminton, one day, Sindhu, P.V. Sindhu, and her guru, Gopichan, both of them, they came to Delhi because they are from the same state. They visited me. So they, I took them to my badminton court. They said, you are playing on a hard surface. It's no good. After some time, you'll get knee problems. Knee and then gave me some advice to change the surface of the ground. I did it. So that's why, thanks to them, so far I have not got knee pain. The sports give you a lot of energy, a lot of inner strength. I'm happy that your school has got facilities and some of the children who are studying here or who have studied here has come to a greater level. That is the advantage of playing games of your choice. And badminton, according to me, two things I said now one is playing, other thing is yoga. They are the cheapest, cheapest yoga, no entry fees. Badminton also, the courts can be made anywhere. Now they are being made everywhere, and children can get into that those places and then strengthen their resolve. Everybody cannot become a Sindhu or cannot become a Gopichan or many, but evaluate their example. You have to forego certain things. You know Sindhu. Sindhu told me also, what is your favorite? She said, eating biryani. So she has to sacrifice biryani. She, every day she takes biryani. You know, Madhya Pradesh will move forward. <laughs> Madhya Pradesh means. <laughs> Madhya Pradesh means busy. So you have to make certain sacrifices. Small, small. Oh, once in a way, of course, you can eat biryani. Don't be under the impression to, and avoid playing badminton. <laughs> no, tomorrow, what's so I have to eat biryani or pola, whatever it is. No. But if you want to really become smart, work hard, you must eat protein food and reasonable intake, what is required for the body. These small, small things have to be kept in mind. That aside, as I told you, sports is very essential. You may not become a sportsman or a sportswoman, but you will become an idealistic man or a woman by participating in sports. So I call upon all the students, take to some sports of your choice, whatever it is. Though I favor bad, badminton because it's a light game for my age. And also, as I told you, and easy to play. For other things, you need to get players. I'll share my example. I used to play with MPs. 
Later I found some of the MPs are very lazy fellows. They don't come on time. Not all, some of them. So I, then I changed my team. I have a team now. My members of my team is one, my driver, my cook, and my PA, and myself. Four of us were the team and we play badminton. Small, small steps. Oh, they also enjoy. And I also enjoy because they are ready-made available to me in my house, in vice president residence till the other day and now, of course, as former vice president also, now I am given a bungalow in Dizzy. There also, I am trying to have a badminton court so that I can continue with the sport. Thank you so much, sir. That was really inspiring. Sir, that was the last question by the panelist. Thank you very much for dedicating your time to come here and grace us with your presence. This truly has been an inspirational discussion, and I'm confident that my peers have listened carefully and will be inc inculcating your advice into their lives going forward. Again, thank you very much for your time and dedication, and with that, I will hand over the ceremony to the MCs. Thank you very much. God bless you all. That was a wonderful discussion. I'm sure we all learned a lot from His Excellency and his valuable experiences in life. To borrow the words of Mr. Jayaram Ramesh, he may have retired, but will never be tired. May I request Mr. Naidu to sign our guest book? Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request our chairman, Mr. Atul Tamurnikar, to felicitate Mr. Venkaya Naidu and present him with a token of our appreciation. to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Naidu for his invaluable time and for being here with us today. I request everyone to rise for the national anthems.
Once again, I request the audience to remain seated.